take a look at energy changes without a change in state. Now, why would this be important? Energy changes are extremely important. This is essentially how we get energy or measure energy in a system. So this can be as, uh, used to test um, how many calories are in a particular type of food. It can be used to calculate out um, how what types of compounds we're working with. There's a lot of different applications to energy changes. Uh, and we can measure our energy change in terms of heat using this equation. So Q here is for heat. Totally makes sense, right? Heat. Uh, we ran out a lot of letters, so we're using Q. So Q is our heat gained or lost, and we'll talk about what that looks like as far as the sign on this. C is our specific heat of a substance, and we'll look, take a look at some specific heats and how that uh, is measured. The mass of the substance is M. So the mass of the substance, remember mass is in grams. So do make sure that if you are doing these types of calculations, that whatever you're looking at, you have the mass in grams. The temperature, we are looking at the difference in temperature, so the final temperature minus the initial temperature, or the delta T. So this just means that it's the final minus the initial as your delta T. The temperature can be written in Celsius or Kelvin, so degrees Celsius or in Kelvin, um, because we're finding the difference. Uh, later, in other types of calculations where we're looking at an absolute temperature, we would have to have it always in Kelvin. If, you, if it helps you to always do these calculations in Kelvin, that can kind of sometimes help with the consistency of these types of calculations. So let's take a look at uh, some of the components. So specific heat. So specific heat capacity is essentially a measure of how much heat it takes to heat up a substance, one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. You can see from this table that metals are very easy to heat. And you can think about this as if you try and sit down on a on a metal bench in the middle of summer when the uh, sun's been beating down on it, it's pretty hot. But if you are in that same summer and you try and jump into a pool, it's typically not hot because it's got a very high heat capacity. It takes a lot of energy to heat up water by one degree Celsius. So you can see very low energy for metals, very high energy for water, ethanol, ice, and different things that are a bit more structured. So let's go ahead and calculate a heat change. What is the change in heat when 50.0 grams of liquid water is heated from 12.2 degrees Celsius to 67.5 degrees Celsius? So here we want to make sure and bring our, our equation over. So our heat equals our specific heat times mass times the change in the temperature. We need the specific heat of water. The specific heat of, of liquid water is 4.186 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Yes, this is a complex unit, and this is all just a unit, okay? So you do want to make sure you keep all of these together. It may help to also rewrite that unit as joules so you can rewrite this as 4.186 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. So you can keep track. Show you how you work with this. So I'm going to plug all these values into my equation. I have 4.186 joules per gram degrees Celsius. I've written it as a fraction. So you can see how the grams are going to cancel out. And the degrees Celsius are going to cancel out here. My mass is the 50.0 grams, so sometimes it helps to go ahead and label from your problem. Your final temperature, so it's heated from 12.2 degrees Celsius to 67.5 degrees. So this is my final temperature. And this is my initial temperature. So these are just swapped in here. It may help to go ahead and write them out pull them out of the problem, make sure to write them carefully. Because it does matter whether which one goes first and which one goes second. Because that'll change the sign of your problem. I first do my subtraction, because it's in the parentheses. 
and then I multiply through, and I get this value out of my calculator, but I round to three significant figures, because we've got three significant figures, three, three significant, so I need three significant figures in my final answer. So I have 11,600 joules. So do make sure you can practice this, see that whether you can get the same value. Let's take a look at a second example. In this example, what is the change in heat when 12.0 grams of liquid water is cooled from 42.3 degrees Celsius to 15.3 degrees Celsius? So this is my mass from, so this is my initial, and this is my final. So it's going to be very important that you keep track of that. I plug in my values into my equation. So notice I have 15.3 degrees Celsius minus 42.3 degrees Celsius here. When I subtract those, I get a negative value, negative 27.0 degrees Celsius. My Q here ends up being negative 1,360 joules. Notice it is negative. The other was positive. It is important, the sign. So the sign here indicates whether heat is going out of or into the system. So to heat something up, you're going to have to have a positive heat because it's going, you're increasing the heat of your system. You're putting heat into it, heating it up. For cooling something down, you're actually removing heat from that system, so you have a negative heat here. You'll also be measuring the heat um, for using heat transfer. So you'll look at a coffee cup calorimeter and using this to measure the heat lost or gained by something. The way, way reason this is going to work is we're going to off this concept, which is that energy is conserved. That means that if something is giving off heat, something else has to absorb it. The heat can't just disappear. It has to go somewhere. So this is a you know, simple type of calorimeter. A calorimeter is just something used to measure heat without that uh, heat uh, being gained or lost to the environment. So you just, you would want to measure this very carefully. One last thing that we want to keep in mind when we're talking about heat and heat changes is that the heat changes are going to be different if we are dealing with changes in physical state. So all of the um, calculations that we're going to do for heat changes are within a particular physical state. So we're staying in liquid water or we're staying in ice or we're staying in a gas form. Because if we're changing the physical state, that's going to change how our calculations work. And we're not going to go into too much depth on those types of calculations, but it's just important that you know that these are different types of calculations. Because notice that when I have a change in physical state, there's no change in temperature. The temperature stays constant. And you kind of did this in the, uh, you saw this in the first lab. This heat is constant throughout. So heat of vapor is, so we talk about heat of vaporization and heat of, of fusion at the melting or boiling point. So like, like I said, energy is added, but the temperature doesn't change. All the energy goes into changing the physical state. So heat of vaporization, it's for the heat needed to switch between liquid and gas. And that could be, you know, you're putting heat in if you're going from liquid to gas, you're pulling the heat out if you're going from gas to liquid. Heat of fusion is the same type of thing between a solid and a liquid. So just, I want you to be aware that that exists. Um, we're not going to go into too much about the calculations with those, but it is important to know that they are slightly different types of calculations because there is no change in temperature.